सर आई एम थैंकफुल टू द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स हु हैव पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दिस डिबेट एंड जनरली वेलकम्ड द मीजर बिफोर द हाउस दिस एमेंडिंग मीजर ऑफ द मोटर व्हीकल्स एक्ट एज ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स मे परहैप्स रिकलेक्ट हैज हैड अ वेरी चेकड करियर एंड इन फैक्ट दिस एमेंडिंग प्रोसेस स्टार्टेड टेन ईयर्स बैक इट वेंट टू द सेलेक्ट कमिटी स्टेज एंड अ सर्टेन फाइनलिटी वॉज गिवन टू इट एट दैट टाइम दैन इट कुड नॉट बी पुस्ड थ्रू लेटर इवेंट्स मेड इट नेसेसरी फॉर फर्दर चेंजेज टू बी मेड इन द एमेंडिंग मीजर एंड आई शुड थिंक दैट दिस एमेंडिंग बिल हैज कम एट अ वेरी अपॉर्चुन मोमेंट बिफोर द हाउस वेन द होल इम्फेसिस इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट of our planning is on the development of more and more transport capacity i should like honorable members to view this question in that aspect and if they do so they will find that this bill provides for and enables various steps to be taken so that transport capacity can be fully developed para there was some mention about nationalization and i thought the opposition to it if any was very mild and had become thoroughly modified in the course of these few months it has come to a stay and that has been very well realized by honorable members who were not perhaps so happy as others regarding this question of nationalization so let us consider what is the task that is to be done by the various transport systems in the country rail road and so on para there is a huge task to be performed by all these they have to go hand in hand and perform this huge task it is well known that the rail transport capacity that will be generated in the course of the next few years they will not be able to move all the traffic we have said so on several occasions the allotment of resources for the purpose of railway planning and development falls very much short of the requirements even as per the original targets the railways have to expand their capacity by about 42 or 43 million tons and the additional traffic that will be generated was calculated as 60 and odd million tons so even as per the original targets there was a gap of 17 to 18 million tons now certain targets have undergone an upward revision for instance for cement production para it is roughly calculated that the cost of the railway plan will have to go up by another rupees 100 crores to move these additional 50 million tons so when there is so much to move and when there is so much 
traffic offering there is no question of conflict between rail and road transport rail and road transport have to join hands and lift the traffic that will be generated viewed from this angle it will be found that there is no conflict para one honorable member referred to this matter and said that the railways should not adopt a dog in the manger policy i have no difficulty in agreeing with him the railways do not propose to follow a dog in the manger policy perhaps the honorable member does not know that we have taken various steps towards relaxation of restrictions on inter regional transport which he was mentioning he spoke from experience and said that he was a member of one regional transport authority even as far back as 1994 this subject was considered and state governments were advised to relax the restrictions that they were having both on private carriers and public carriers they were asked to give the utmost freedom to private carriers perhaps the position is not very well realized that in our country the majority of the trucks are only public carriers in other advanced industrialized countries the majority are private carriers it has been brought out in the report of the study group which went into this question that perhaps 70 to 80% of the total number of trucks are in private hands here also in our country the various industrial establishments new and old can really go in for owning and operating more and more private carriers they can own a large fleet and can have workshop facilities also and they need not campaign against the railways for not carrying things so the indication is that private industries and new plants and new units that are going to be set up can very well go in for owning a large fleet of private carriers which can carry goods over small distances of course over very long distances it may not be possible to operate private carriers through even there it will be possible to operate over long distances to some extent para so there is no question of any conflict as i said between rail transport and road transport coming to road transport let us see whether the nationalization policy of the state governments comes in the way of expansion of private road transport